On the eve of the war in 1914, when we used to cheerfully hum along to the comic army song Avec la vidas, on se My squaddy friend and I stick together because we're both from Arras, the main town and pride of Padicale. We could never have imagined that four years later we wouldn't see our homes again since 80% of Arras was razed to the ground. And it happened all too quickly. The war had begun on August the 3rd, 1914 and within a month, the enemy had marched through the town. In October 1914, after the Battle of the Marne, a shower of shells was fatal to the town hall and the belfry. More bombardments followed in June and July 1915, destroying more than 100 of the 155 magnificent gables of the Flemish mansions situated around the Great Square. Reconstruction work began in 1919 and didn't end until 1934. Today it's on the small square that the town hall has regained its 16th century nobility and where the proud belfry rises 246 feet into the clouds. Since 1945, in memory of the heroes of the resistance, the small square has become La Place des Héros. It was during the second conference of Chantilly in November 1916 that the Battle of Arras was discussed. Why Arras? Because at that time the town had become a military base from which the Tommies could secretly prepare a large-scale offensive against the German lines. It was a World War battle par excellence since it brought together soldiers from five continents. The Allies countered the German army with chiefly cosmopolitan divisions since in the British ranks alongside the Welsh, Irish and Scots were many brave men coming from the distant dominions of the crown of his gracious majesty. At the end of 1916, the work accomplished by the New Zealanders in Arras, or to be more precise, under Arras, was absolutely incredible. For six months non-stop, they turned into diggers and chalk miners. They dug more than 13 miles of tunnels to house the 24,000 men called up to engage in battle. It was on Monday, April the 19th, 1917, at 5.30 in the morning, that 20,000 men suddenly sprang from the bowels of the town to storm the enemy's trenches with guaranteed surprise effect. This set of underground tunnels in which the greatest surprise attack of World War I was prepared was named the Wellington Quarry. This was in reference to the capital of New Zealand, where the soldiers transformed into tunneling machines came from. The quarry has now been transformed into an invaluable memorial, showing how the soldiers lived as they waited to launch the 1917 Easter Monday attack. Being nostalgic for New Zealand 12,000 miles away, these tireless tunnelers named the rooms that they created after the towns and cities of their homeland. Places such as Russell or Bluff, as well as Christchurch, Auckland, Nelson and of course Wellington. The Germans had occupied the Vimy Ridge since October 1914. Every attempt to win it back had been in vain until the horrific April assault from the 9th to the 12th when four Canadian divisions managed to recapture the ridge. But at a huge price, more than 10,000 Allied soldiers were killed or wounded during the offensive. An impressive memorial was created to remind us of their sacrifice during the war. It's said that it was in Vimy, when they found themselves united in the same struggle, that the spirit of the Canadian nation was born, infused in the men from Ontario or New Brunswick. Vimy, or the first step towards Canadian autonomy. Today, on the walls of the two white towers which make up the monument, the names of 11,285 Canadian soldiers who were left behind and died on French soil are engraved. From 1916 onwards, the British buried hundreds of their soldiers in the small cemetery in the district of Arras, called the Faubourg d'Amiens. When peace was restored, the cemetery was expanded to accommodate the 2,650 graves of the Commonwealth soldiers of World War I. This cemetery is also the memorial of the battle, where the names of the 35,000 British soldiers who have no known graves 
and who had perished in the vicinity of Arras are engraved. The village of Atty was liberated by Scottish soldiers on April the 9th, 1917. A cairn, a tower of Celtic granite blocks brought from Scotland, was erected in their honour at the spot called Point du Jour on the Arras Douai Road. The Australians twice stormed the German lines at the town of Bulcourt, the first time on April the 11th, 1917, and the second time on May the 3rd. In all, nearly 10,000 men were killed or wounded. In 1993, in the Australian Memorial Park, a statue of a soldier nicknamed the Digger was inaugurated in tribute to the courageous victims who tried to protect themselves from enemy fire. A museum packed with everyday objects tells the story of the lives of Australian fighters in the Bulcourt area during the Battle of Arras. It was the soldiers of Newfoundland who distinguished themselves on the hill of Moshe le Preux. In memory of their sacrifice and bravery of April the 14th, 1917, a proud bronze caribou, the symbol of Newfoundland courage, was erected in the village on the ruins of a German fortification. Near the church, the monument dedicated to the 37th British Division recalls the capture of the village on the second day of the battle. Three British cemeteries mark the paths of the town. The Battle of Arras ended on Wednesday, May the 16th, 1917. It had lasted 38 days. 38 days of horrific massacre and butchery. It was fatal to nearly 160,000 British soldiers and almost as many Germans. This amounts to the almost unimaginable figure of 8,000 losses a day. At the end of the hostilities, the town of Arras was nothing but a vast field of ruins, a martyr town, more than 80% destroyed. It nevertheless managed to rise from its ashes. Its listed buildings, its town hall, its belfry, the Saint Vast Abbey, its cathedral, and its houses with Flemish Baroque facades were indeed happily rebuilt, identical to how they were before the turmoil, allowing the town to regain its architectural splendor. <laughs>